Vestiaire is both a buying and a selling platform. We really see our job in connecting buyers and sellers globally. Uh, and what I mean with globally is that you, you know, really can buy and sell items uh, from anywhere in the world to anywhere in the world, whether you're a Korean buyer uh, buying from a Parisian or New York or London seller or vice versa. That's what we really feel like is our unique strength because we really make the world one collective wardrobe. We try to make this experience as easy and trustworthy as we can to really allow people to buy secondhand fashion uh, with a huge level of comfort uh, and still a very high level of service. And most importantly is of course the sustainability aspect of our platform, our business model is based on circularity. We don't produce any items. We've become a B Corp uh, in 2021. And you know, we fundamentally see our mission in helping consumers see the impact that their consumption has on the planet and really try to educate them also that they are much more conscious of, of sustainability uh, when they think about buying the next piece. So educating them and changing their consumer behavior over time. Our customers are you know, very unique. Um, we have two broader customer types. Um, the first one is the trendy circular shopper. The second one is the more creative fashion buyers. The trendy circular shoppers both buy and sell on the platform. They're very up to date um, on the latest trends, whether it's through Instagram or TikTok. They put a lot of effort in their look. Um, they love the treasure hunt, they own unique designer and luxury pieces. And, and what is really important about them is that they're very conscious of the, the future resale value when they buy a fashion item. They absolutely have sustainability top of mind and really see vintage um, and, and the items that they buy and sell on our platform uh, as a new way of shopping uh, and, and one of the main reasons that they come. At the moment, this fashion buyer, you know, in line with the you know, Y2K uh, trend globally, is really looking for the old you know, Tom Ford Gucci pieces. They're looking for Jean-Paul Gaultier. They're looking for Versace. Um, so it's really very up to date what these consumers find on us. And, and as I mentioned before, we have 25,000 new pieces coming on the platform every day, which really are a mirror of the, the latest fashion trends. The, the second target audience is, is the more creative fashion buyers who are slightly older. They're mainly buying on the platform. They always look and, and, and want to make sure that they you know, look very stylish and cool. They want to find their own way to express their fashion sense. You know, the, the beautiful thing um, about our platform is, of course, you find the latest and, and hottest pieces on the platform, but you also have the last trends of the last 20, 30 years on the platform. So everyone can really express their own individuality by buying and selling pieces um, on our platform. They look for timeless and, and lasting pieces. They really understand the value of items. I think when, when, you, when you think about what we do, uh, it's really about educating people about buying quality, not quantity, and about the long lasting item that every single item that they acquire on the platform. And, and this is really educating them that they're buying assets, not consumables, and they appreciate value and, and, and really look at it as an investment piece. And what do you think the concept of sustainability will look like in the fashion industry in five or ten years from now? Do you see major shifts coming? I think it's inevitable. I think there's no, there's no way around it. You know, like all of us will have to drive electric cars in five to ten years, given where the planet stands currently and where, um, you know, the actions are that need to be taken for us to do something about it. You know, I see no, no chance that the fashion industry will not be forced, you know, through regulatory to change its ways. I mean, I, you know, to, to look at some of the very worrying perspectives, the retail and fashion industry is one of the biggest polluters in the world on the planet. I think it's the second biggest. And there's so much fast fashion being produced and, and wasted. If you look at brands like Zara, or H&M, you know, they're producing close to a billion 
plus pieces per company per year, um, which in the end get worn and then thrown away. So our consumer behavior has to change and, and with you know, the, 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 the luxury industry, but the fashion industry as a whole, it's, it's not necessarily the, what does the government, what do I or what do they want, but it's what the consumers want. And, and what we have really seen, especially over the summer with these very severe uh, uh, you know, climate change events, fires, droughts, floods, that our consumers have become more and more vocal about it. And we've actually seen a, a big acceleration of the business over the summer, de facto, because people would open the newspaper every day and see how many bad things um, are happening. And then they really are starting to vote with their own feet and, and, and their own purchasing behavior. So I think the fashion industry, in some sort of way, has to respond to that because it's expected of it.